Hi, thank you. Um, my question is, and it sounds to me like, you know, I can get in a place of being really connected to my source energy and, you know, right in this moment and, and look at your blouse and say, gosh, I like that color of that blouse, or, well, I like the feeling in this room, or I like whatever, and just keep going from moment to moment saying, wow, I really like this, or I really like that. And that puts me in a really, really connected place, and I feel this joyful flow moving through me. So you're using what you're observing as a means to connect with source energy. Right. Yeah. So if I do that, and I went from moment to moment, day to day, doing that, I wonder whether it, it feels to me like, what does that do to my desires? Because all of a sudden, my desires seem to become much less important to me. And it's more just about allowing well-being in any moment that I'm in. So I, it's, it's kind of a question in there. I don't know. Are you okay. saying to us that you do not believe that your desires can grow unless you are in a negative place? No, I, what I'm kind of saying is that I feel that when I think about my desire, it more energizes the fact that I don't have it. Whereas if I say, you know what, whatever, and there's joy in this moment, and I can allow myself to be joyful in this moment, um, it seems well, I'm focusing less on the desire. Here's the, here's the thing. As you move through your experience, your exposure to life, your exposure to contrast, helps you to sharpen and clarify your desires. So you're sending out literally thousands of rockets of desire on a daily basis, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. When you see something that you admire, and in your feeling of appreciation, you are launching a clarifying rocket about that. When you are standing in the middle of something not wanted, the contrast helps you offer a clarifying rocket about that. So even if you were to try, you could not stop offering clarification about what you are wanting. These are vibrational responses to the life experience that you are living. This is the natural byproduct of your exposure to this environment. But when you are deliberately reaching for thoughts that feel good to you, now you're holding yourself in the place that you are now allowing yourself to receive what the universe is already yielding to you. Your confusion is the reason that we are offering it to you in this three-point system, so to speak, where you ask whether you know that you are or not. The universe yields whether you know that it is or not, but what you must be conscious of is whether you are in the receiving mode. So for some time, we've been trying to get you to see it in two perspectives. There is the birthing of the desire, and then there is the allowing of the desire in. Many people think that they have to goose up their desire, and in fact, they are only really aware that their desire is present when they're suffering in the absence of it. So much so that when we talk about wanting, or when we talk about desire, we said to a group one day, we are specifically addressing a woman, and we said to her, is there anything that you want? And she said, no, not really. And we said, well, what about this and this and this and this? And she said, oh, Abraham, I already have all of that. And what she was saying to us was, it is only the unmanifested or unfulfilled things that she is calling desire. And what we are wanting you to realize is that you hold this continuing asking of infinite desires. You cannot stop desiring, and the universe never stops yielding. The only thing that has ever been out of whack is your receiving mode. And what you discover when you get into the receiving mode is that so many things that you've been not letting in begin to come in, which immediately gives you a whole new platform to start the launching process all over again. So you need not ever worry that there will be any shortage of desire on your part. It could not happen. The entire universe is established to provide it. Helpful? Yeah, well, the other day I was, after listening to one of your tapes, I was thinking about how I kind of seemed to have my desires held by a tight rein. And well, if I just let them go, what would that be like? So I let them go, and it was like, and I went this, 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 this. And it was like I could have gone on saying all the things that I wanted, even just in the moment. I want more heat or whatever. And um, I thought, well, so is it the manager's job to manage all that? Yes. I'll just throw them all out? Yes. Because it seems to me that every moment you could have a new desire. Well, it is great fun when you begin to contour your desire. 
In other words, we are not suggesting that you just throw it all out without enjoying the deliciousness of molding it into place. We're talking about launching a desire and then recognizing the relationship between where you stand vibrationally and it. Very often, we will see someone who is focused upon a desire, and we can tell that the desire is not a joyous experience for them. They feel incomplete and unfulfilled and sometimes fearful and often uncomfortable that they have this unwanted thing. And do you know that the majority of people, when they use the word desire, mean that feeling? And that feeling is not a receiving mode feeling. That feeling is a not letting it in feeling, you see. So people mix up what the feeling of desire really is. The feeling of desire from in the purest sense of the word and in the way we know it and want you to begin to feel it always is this awareness of something new that is becoming and eager anticipation of the unfolding of it. In other words, that you, you are not beings on your way to ending places. You are evolving beings. It is the journey that it is all about. And so as you stand here and you say, I'd sure feel better if I were over there, we say the only thing about that is that when you get over there, there's always going to be another over there. There's always going to be another over there. And so if not being over there makes you unhappy while you're over here, then you're always going to be unhappy in your nows. But if you can establish this feeling of satisfaction, first you have to accept that you are eternal beings. You get what that means? You are eternal beings. That means there is no ending. That means there will always be another unfulfilled desire. And that is a wonderful thing. We would like to help you come to peace with the incompleteness of your eternal nature. It's a good thing that you never get it done. It's a good thing that as fast as the manifestation occurs, a whole new set of contrasting experience gives birth to a whole new set of other rockets and of desire. And the satisfaction of life is in continually bringing myself into alignment with my newfound desire, into alignment with my newfound desire. That's that feeling of expansiveness that is so delicious. So as you say, um, to take time in molding the desire, um, sometimes I find that I am mistrusting of my desire because it's like, well, I don't know, you know, am I sure that I really want that? Like, there seems to be a fine line. Well, what difference does it make if you're sure or not? What if it turns out that you thought you wanted it and when you got it, you didn't really want it? Does that mean you have to carry it in a sack on your back forevermore? I asked for it. That's what your mother said about the food she put on your plate. You asked for it, now you eat it. And so you, so you think it's one of those kinds. So if you find yourself in a place where you've invited something in and once it got there, it isn't as satisfying as you thought it would, just focus on something else. Nothing will stay in your experience that you are not focusing on. You just make a new decision from wherever you are. It's like someone may end up with a bodily condition that they do not want. And so they say, well... No, I've got it. I have to keep it forever. And we say, just give your attention to something else. It will not remain. Nothing stays in your experience that you are not a vibrational match to, you see. And nothing can come to your experience that you are not a vibrational match to. Everything is about vibrational matches. So this brings me full circle. So if I stay, to my, stay in this moment in a really connected place, and feel the oneness and the exhilaration of just being alive, or whatever it is that my thoughts attach to it specifically in the moment, but the feeling is the feeling of exhilarated connectedness. If I'm in that place, it, it makes me question, well, then does it, what does it matter, really? What is coming to me? What's going out? What is just coming and going like the tide coming in and out? And there's a problem with that? Well, I'm curious. Well, I don't know. Is that it? I mean, well, I wonder, well, is, that, there, is that it? There then? would be a problem for someone who is trying to justify their existence through the struggle. Or there might be a problem for someone who is thinking that the coming and going of events is the way that they are acknowledged as valuable or worthy. Let us throw some things out to you that might be clarifying here. We'll ask all of you this question. Does it bother you? that source energy adores 100% of the population? Does it bother you that no matter what you do in terms of behavior, 
the source energy never withholds itself from you. Now, the reason we put it to you in terms of if we say, does it bother you that source energy adores you, most of you would say, oh, no, that's good. That's good, and I will work to learn to accept it. But when we say, does it bother you that source energy adores 100% of the population, you say, well, then how do we sort the good ones like me out from the bad ones like them? How do we sort this whole thing out? Isn't there a, an arbitrator who somehow does the withholding, the blessing and the cursing? There is source energy that is flowing to all, and all of you deserve it. It's just a matter of getting into the receiving mode then your question sort of says, well, so there's just one joyful moment after another. There's just exposure to contrast, which helps me to identify particular things that would please me. And then the universe delivers to me. And then my work is just to be in a place where I receive what I've identified that I want. What if I'm not choosing as well as I should? What if there are others who are choosing better? It well, my question is more, is that enough? I mean, is that enough? Can I just walk out there after this gathering and, and just feel this and that's enough I'm doing my well mission maybe it's not this. enough for you maybe more pain is pleasing to you but, <laughs> and, and we and we're and we're kidding but not kidding because that's sort of where you started here is maybe you're talking about that contrast between uh, not having and having and there is some satisfying focusing mechanism and all of that in other words how can we know what we do want if we're not aware of what we don't want and perhaps what you're saying is, if I'm so blissed out and in such a feeling of contentment, wouldn't I lose that critical edge of focus? So well, my question is more, am I, and I know what you're going to answer, but I'm going to say it anyway, is um, am I Y'all fulfilling my... my <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, please. Um, am, I, am I doing enough for the universe? Is if I walk through in a bliss state? Well, you see, you cannot, this is where we began earlier, you cannot help but do your part for the universe. Because when contrast causes you to identify desire, the universe yields it immediately. And all that is expands. So everybody is winning except the one who, in their negative emotion, isn't in the receiving mode and letting it in. That's the whole point of this gathering. We're not here to save the universe. The universe doesn't need saving. We're not here to help the universe expand. The universe can't help but expand. We are here to assist you in getting into the receiving mode so that you can be the receiver of the benefit that you are providing for the universe at large. But you see, there is this thing within you. As physical humans, you have come to measure yourself against others. And whether you know it or not, we think that you are expressing it so powerfully and wonderfully here, most of you equate your value with your struggle. You do. And if there's not struggle, then there cannot be value. And if there is value that comes without struggle, then how valuable really is it, which is sort of what's at the heart of, and heart of what you're saying. And what we want you to realize is there is no value in struggle. There is only resisting the well-being that would be within your experience otherwise. You're bringing up some very good things here because much of your human population really believes that it is through struggle and hardship that the good stuff comes. And we don't know where you get this stuff. It is vibrationally illogical. The struggle, the price you pay, the hardship, all of that stuff has just all been stuff you've picked up along your physical trail that you're using as your excuse not to allow the well-being in. And then as more of you don't allow the well-being in, it shows up in shadows in your life that are illnesses in your body and deprivation of things that you want. And then you assign those things labels. And over time, you come to believe that that is a reality that has a source somewhere. And then you develop whole bodies of information to protect yourself from the evil source that never existed to begin with. Indeed. Indeed.